Yeah. 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 What's left? Uh, not much. Just need a OBD2 port. Okay. Yeah, no problem. I got one. Okay. Oh. It's in there somewhere. So previously on the LS, we mounted the engine solid, transmission solid, got the exhaust figured out, and then we got into the finicky fabrication, which includes the air to air on how to get the air into the engine from underneath the car to behind the headlight to in front of the rad to on top of the rad and then into the intake. Now we got to figure out how to mount the AC compressor, the power steering pump and the alternator while still turning the water pump. Here we go. This pipe is a Germax. This is just a little piece from what I uh, that came with the kit, but it just kind of curls, not quite 45, not quite 90 or straight, and then it just comes around through the hole just perfect, and then curls around nice and close to the headlight. So basically, I got to start with things I can't change. The exhaust, it is where it is. I can't change anything except to like a certain degree. The turbo is a big unit. Got to make sure I can to fit an air filter in this corner and that the exhaust kind of goes down and and I would have liked to angle it more but what I gain on the exhaust I lose on the intake I didn't want to come in straight from the side here kind of ugly so that's why we made this and, and it kind of tucked around now that leaves this space right here you had to lose the washer bottle that's gonna go in the trunk where the spare tire uh, used to be it's flat anyway and the rim doesn't match so there's no way he could ever drive that down the road <laughs> come on the rim doesn't match so I've got this space to work with to put my ABS um, I gotta run new lines for the brakes so when you pop the hood all you're gonna see is the engine and and piping which is what I want um, they're gonna try and hide as much as the wiring as we possibly can so once that's all in there and mocked up I can put it in there I can't change that I can't change the location of the um, alternator and the power steering bracket like at all and then my exhaust guy is gonna have to fight around it and try to make that exhaust go back out the back so um, I'm actually really happy with how this is all coming together I'm losing a lot of sleep rolling around in bed but uh thinking about what else to do but um yeah here we go oh that, it's this one i'm sure it's this one the hardest part of the wiring harness is figuring out what each goes where but lt1swap.com is the place to go and we all know that so check them out and uh once we get this all stripped we'll go yeah. from there this one's got all the hybrid shit on there too this doesn't have O2 sensors. It's got a hybrid. No, it's got a O2 sensor. Oh, here it is. So I went online and there is no bracket to just bolt on the stuff, so we make our own. So what I did was I took the Mercedes bracket that houses the AC compressor and the power steering pump, which also does the hydraulic brakes, and adapted that to fit the LS block. So it's nice having our little test engine here. We can use the truck balancer, I think. We have enough distance to put this balancer in front of the rad. It's gonna be close, but I think we have about a half inch to spare because the Corvette balancer is even farther in. And the way the bracket worked out for the Mercedes is it actually fit really nice where it is right now. So I got my buddy Ian uh, from International Stretcher down the road uh, to weld uh, some new brackets in place, drilled a new hole into some square stock, put it in place, bolted it on, and then just tacked it in place and got him to weld it up solid. So the, the bracket is actually really robust. It's gonna be mounted uh, one bolt there, uh, one bolt here, one bolt here, and then I'm gonna make a little bracket right here as this hole lines up perfect with uh, these two, and that'll allow me to, uh, if I have to, just to tweak it, make sure that I'm, I'm balanced 100% with, with the tilt here. So now, I'm gonna throw it on the side of the block and make sure that the power steering lines and the uh, lines for the hydraulic shocks fit in between the frame rail and that the AC compressor, um, I don't really wanna mess with those lines. I haven't, I haven't actually even drained the system. I basically just wanna put the AC compressor back to the original spot and plug it back in again, which, which would be the cheapest. So I tried finding the belt routing for a LS powered 94 Mercedes online but there wasn't anything I don't want to put ribs in the water pump just because that's more machining oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I literally stared at this belt setup for an hour and I tried to root it every which way. The only way I could make it work, but I'm still using the truck pulley, but just adding a, a couple of ribs on the front drive, which originally ran the AC compressor, but then adding the ribs to drive the AC compressor on this side now, and then the uh, power steering pump and the uh, water pump, and then using the original six rib belt to drive the alternator. So I gotta move the alternator forward yet. Not that I want to, but I'll probably just uh, make the alternator adjustable to put the tension on it. I have just enough room for the rad. I literally have like a quarter inch between the front pulley and the rad, but that's okay. My parts guys uh, hate me, but I just say I need a six rib belt that's this long. And um, I had to make the idler up here to wrap around the water pump to turn it enough. So um, I literally just have, it's tight. I can just put my fittings in. They just fit up above the, the frame rail, but the one for the hydraulic shocks is at a 90 and that's gonna hit the frame. So I gotta build something, either a really tight 90 if I can find it, or uh, get my welder to change the uh, fitting so it points out the back. So that'll be interesting. But uh, really happy with how that turned out, so. <sighs> oh. It fits, but just barely. So the, the bracket's okay. It's too bad that there's, this is the only way that I can root the belt. Um, I tried I tried doing it in one, in one serpentine belt, but it's just not gonna happen. So I had to put this idler here to grab the backside of the water pump. And unfortunately, I see this belt. If it wasn't for this idler, I think you wouldn't even see the belt at all or any of the belts. I can pop my, my lines in, I might have to do one, one for the hydraulic shocks at the back. I don't have any choice uh, except to put the Mercedes stuff on the side because it runs the hydraulic shocks at the back. So, and then uh, the AC compressor is nicely right where it used to be. I'm gonna have to put the alternator on its own belt on the side, but the exhaust, uh, it'll look like the ones on the back of the Duramax and the power strokes where it pretty much build a box and then have the connector for the exhaust coming out the corner here. So this will be kind of an awkward spot. We're gonna move the battery into the trunk and then build the air box right here so it's out of the, uh, it gets the fresh air from the windshield and kind of keeps the exhaust alone, even though we'll probably wrap the exhaust. Just gotta build a mount for that. Get a mount for the uh, transmission cooler, which is gonna go right here. We'll get a stainless steel uh, overflow tank made and then we're getting there. This is gonna be pretty cool. So I know you guys have been waiting for this and that's the uh, electrical part of the uh, LS build. We basically got it in. It fits, it's tight, but it fits. Um, basically we know that physically we can make this work. Uh, now we just gotta get it running. So I, I got my buddy Chris here, who's actually a friend of Todd's. Yep. All right. Yeah. Thank you. So basically just take us quickly through it. What, uh, what do you do? Yeah, so basically use uh, HP tuner software. Uh, you can use it to tune, you can use it to scan. So the HP Tuner is about as user-friendly as it possibly gets. You can get it off eBay or even off of Summit. You get the HP Tuner interface, and along with that, you get credits. And a certain amount of credits unlock certain features of the computer. We use up two of those credits. Now, once you get access to that computer, basically, the sky's the limit for what you want to do with that computer. For now, we're gonna unlock the VAT system, the vehicle anti-theft system, and that will allow us to run the engine on the stand, make sure that it runs, and then with a subscription to the HP Tuner website, you can download somebody else's tune on an engine that is similar. And then you can go from there and fine tune it by skipping literally 10 hours of tuning. So at first I was a little overwhelmed uh, to dip into this, um, but all I did was I just uh, paid attention to LT1swaps.com and uh, I just read, 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 and then I pulled off all the looms, all the covering on the wires here, and then I actually realized that it's not that bad of a task. We just want full disclosure that we're not being sponsored by any, any, uh, anybody, especially LT1, whoever put up the LT1 site, but he deserves recognition for all the work that he's put into setting that site up. So, um, and if you go on any forum, anywhere you go, it's like, how do I do this? You know what, my answer, go to lt1swap.com. So we're just saying what they are and we're just verifying that um, it is well, well worth it. And it, it all does look like this website was made in the 90s, which was when he did his swaps. Absolutely. And LT is actually the late 90s model, but it still applies to GM, which is why we love the GM platform. It's, uh, 
the fundamentals are what you're looking for. You're looking for the fundamentals on the site and then just uh, familiarizing yourself with the pins and the computers, the sensors and what they do. So one of these is your uh, fuse ignition positive voltage all the time and one of them is your ignition wire. So we have, uh, I have them run into the relay here. Here's our uh, power all the time, 12 volts, and here's our ignition and it's it runs through the relay. So by turning the relay on, you're applying power to the system. And then we take all of our grouped up grounds and we plug them in. And right there, you look at the code reader here that we have plugged into the OBD2 port. Power it up and you can tell that, okay, it's reading my computer, everything's okay. And then it says, no diagnostic trouble codes. So this is just the Mercedes harness here uh, from the original Mercedes motor. And I'm just gonna cut off what we don't need and just clean it up so that it's nice and tidy. This engine is actually pretty cool that a 94, it's basically the same wiring as uh, the LS's in 2006 or 2002, whatever that computer is. So here we're just, uh, this is where we're gonna mount the computer for the LS, and so the original Mercedes computer's here, and we're just gonna take our GM computer and we're gonna put it right here. We built a little bracket, we're gonna clean this up nice. So this is a dual climate control for the Mercedes, so it's got the, the water lines coming from the heater core to two different motors, which moves it back and forth. We're gonna leave the wiring harness to see what gear it's in for now and then also the speedo sensors is the cable so uh, once that's done we can pull the engine back out again we're going to build this engine so studs valve springs head gaskets and a cam and then uh, put the injectors on it we'll fire it up on the stand and then bring it to the dyno shop so um, but what i'd really like to do is take two engines to the dyno shop take a bone stock 5.3 put the cam in it and uh, put the turbo on it and just boost it and see how much it, we can give it and how much force we can get without even touching the engine. Did you read that hot rod uh, article that they did? 1,100 pounds or 1,100 yeah. horsepower. <laughs> yeah, with 36, 36 PSI. Pounds. I don't think we can get 36 PSI out of it, but uh, it'd be neat to see if we can blow up a 5.3 now. Um, we won't be able to do that with our own funds because uh, the rental of the dyno shop and the cost of the engine. But if you guys support us on Patreon, we'll definitely make that happen. So you can head over to Patreon and if you guys want to see that. If not, we're just going to dyno this one and tune this one. So thanks for watching. Thanks for being patient. Neil, thanks for being patient. Uh, good things are happening. Contacts and stuff like Chris and, and the HP tuner. Uh, originally, we were going to send the harness out to get done and just waiting it and, and, and giving the time to kind of study it, not be in a rush for it. And until uh, springtime obviously allows us to save some money there and, and keep going with the build. So here we go. Hey, hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you love the channel, consider heading over to Patreon. There's a lot of stuff happening there to help support the channel. And remember, if you're not filthy, you're not rich.